Hello dear students so let us discuss what is new in the neonatal resuscitation guidelines recently published by the American Academy of Pediatrics in October 2025 so the guidelines the neonatal resuscitation guidelines have overall essentially remained the same there are just a few minor changes so one very major thing that they have added in the algorithm is they have added initial initiate cord management plan so now they are telling up front that as soon as the baby is born you have to initiate whatever cord management you had planned they are advocating that for all stable term as well as preterm neonates we must do a delayed cord clamping of at least 60 seconds so previously it was at least 30 to 60 seconds now it is at least 60 seconds for all stable term as well as preterm neonates however for non vigorous term and near term neonates they have also advocated that intact cord milking can also be done however for babies born at less than 28 weeks gestation no cord milking is also advocated so initiate cord management plan is now upfront a part of the algorithm as you can see now apart from that another major change that they have done is initiate positive pressure ventilation was there in the previous algorithm when the neonate had apnea bradycardia or you know gasping so heart rate less than 100 per minute apnea or gasping what would you do initiate positive pressure ventilation it still remains the same but they've just removed the term positive pressure they've made it simpler they've just mentioned ventilate the baby okay another major change is about the use of oxygen in neonatal resuscitation now as in the previous guidelines whenever you're doing positive pressure ventilation in a term neonate you still start with what room air that is 21 percent oxygen so in term neonates as well as late preterm neonates born beyond 35 weeks of gestation we start resuscitation with room air that is 21 percent oxygen however for babies born between 32 to 35 weeks of gestation it is recommended that whenever you start positive pressure ventilation you start with a fio2 of 21 to 30 percent and now a new thing has been added in babies less than 32 weeks of gestation if you have to start positive pressure ventilation you have to use a fio2 of more than 30 percent and you have to target the oxygen saturation of the baby now even the target oxygen saturations they've made a slight change in the table the targets minute wise targets remain the same they've just removed the one minute oxygen saturation so now the target oxygen saturation of the neonates the table now starts with 2 minutes but the value remains same so previously also at 2 minutes the target oxygen saturation recommended was 65 to 70% currently also it remains the same so there's no change in the target oxygen saturations per se but they've removed the 1 minute target saturation from the algorithm now apart from that whenever the heart rate of the baby is less than 60 per minute previously it was that start chest compressions and intubate the baby if you have already not done so but now apart from intubation you also have an option of using laryngeal mask airway even when you are doing chest compressions provided the gestational age of the baby is more than 34 weeks now if the baby does not improve you know even after your chest compressions and effective positive pressure ventilation the heart rate still remains less than 60 what do you do you give epinephrine Now they've just modified the route of epinephrine, which is mentioned in the algorithm. The preferred route, according to them, of course, remains through the UVC or umbilical venous catheterization. If you're not able to secure a UVC, they've also added intraosseous route in the algorithm. Now, while you're securing a UVC or intraosseous route, you may resort to endotracheal inter, you know, administration of epinephrine. However, that is not the preferred route. So these are the major changes. in the neonatal resuscitation guidelines 2025 that have been just released in the month of october by the american academy of pediatrics they have also now mentioned just like the pediatric you know basic life support and acute life support guidelines advanced life support guidelines similarly for neonates also they have made they have mentioned a newborn continuum of care so a chain of newborn care is now mentioned which starts from prevention and which you know goes up to the follow up phase and the post resuscitation phase the follow up phase of the baby right